Welcome back to Art Together Online at the Worcester Art Museum, or welcome if you've not been with us before. My name is Liz, and today I'm going to be bringing you a lesson on symmetry, string, and squiggles. We'll have a lot of fun, and we're going to be talking a lot about symmetry today. So symmetry is when something is the same on one side as the other. So with my hands, if I were to draw a line, an imaginary line right in the middle there, you can see that this side is the same as this side. So that's also a really good way to talk about balance. So these are the same on either side. So if we had a pretend seesaw, and I had, let's say, an elephant on one side and a kitty cat on the other, it would be unbalanced. It would be unsymmetrical. But if I had two of the same size cats, that would be balanced. That would be symmetrical. So this is a fun toy. Um, this is called a gyroscope, and it actually balances, but it's also mostly symmetrical, so I wanted to share this with you too. You can see it's the same on this side and this side, same that way, same that way, and so what happens with this is it's symmetrical, but it also can balance, which is why I wanted to show it to you. So here we go. I'm going to hold it by the outside, and I have to pull this string to get it going. And what it does is the motion of the inner wheel is going really, really, really fast in a circle. And so that keeps it standing up. Because if something's already moving, it doesn't want to slow down. So you can see I can even move this different ways. And it stays there. Now if I try to move this over, it sort of wants to fight me. See if it still has enough motion to balance on my thumbnail there. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool toy and it, it talks and sort of teaches us about balance, symmetry, and the different ways that symmetry can come into play. So symmetry isn't just something that's used to, to see, but um, symmetry is used in science and in math, and gyroscopes such as these are used in airplanes and satellites. So a lot of the ways um, actually that we're talking to each other right now with with satellites, um, maybe there's you know a gyroscope and some symmetry somewhere right in the middle there. Well, I'm really excited to get started with you. The next thing we're going to be doing is listening to the Mayama story, and after that we'll be talking about some pieces from the museum. So let's get settled, and I will read you the story. Please enjoy these um, photographs of Australia and the rocks that inspired these stories while you're listening. The Mayama, as told to Kay Langlow Parker and printed in her 1896 collection, Australian Legendary Tales, Folklore of the Nungaburas, adapted and read by Elizabeth Buck. The people had all left their camp and gone away to attend a Bora. Nothing was left in the camp but one very old dog, too old to travel. After the people had been gone about three days, one night came their enemies, the Guies, intending to surprise them and kill them. Painted in all the glory of their war paint came the Guies, their hair tied up in top knots and ornamented with feathers and kangaroo's teeth. Their way was of paddy, melon, and kangaroo rat skins cut in strips round their waists were new and strong, holding firmly some of their boomerangs and wagaras which they had stuck through them. But prepared as they were for conquest, they found only a deserted camp containing naught but one old dog. They asked the old dog where the people were gone, but he only shook his head. Again and again they asked him, and again and again he only shook his head. At last some of the Guyes raised their spears in their morillas or nolanolas, saying, if you do not tell us where they are gone, we shall kill you. Then spoke the old dog, saying only, Gone to the Bora. And as he spoke, every one of the Guyes and everything they had with them was turned to stone. Even the way was round their waists, the top knots on their heads, and the spears in their hands, even these turned to stone. 
and when the people returned to their camp long afterwards, when the bora was over, and the boys, who had been made young men, gone out into the bush to undergo their novitiate, each with his solitary guardian, then saw their enemies, the Gouyes, standing round their old camp as if to attack it. But instead of being men of flesh, they were men of stone. They, their weapons, their way was, and all that belonged to them, stone. And at that place are to be found stones, or mayamas, of great beauty, striped and marked and colored, as were the men painted. And the place of the mayama is on one of the mounts near Beamer. Hello, welcome back. I really hope that you enjoyed the Mayama story. I wanted to share that one with you because I thought it was really very interesting how stories of all types from long ago and even just today are inspired by nature and the world around us. And that was one such piece. Um, it also ties in to some pieces in the Worcester Art Museum collection that exhibit symmetry and we don't get to see very often because they're not in the galleries. So I'm going to be sharing with you three pieces from our collection. The first is going to be this shield right here. Now this shield is made by using pigment on bark and uh, bark is like the outside of the wood. Sometimes they use the inner bark which is a little bit stronger. Pigment is sort of a building block of paint. So what it is, is it's little pieces of rock or plant that are ground up and processed sometimes in some ways to then be mixed with water or perhaps an oil and then applied like a paint. Now pigment is actually used in all of the paints that we use today as well. It's just put into a special recipe um, for different types of paints. So they used the pigment on the bark and they created a symmetrical pattern. You can see that it's the same from top to bottom and side to side. There's even a dividing line almost in the middle going up and down and then also side to side. Now, so this piece is definitely easily symmetrical. We can see that. Now we're going to look at the second piece, which was also painted with pigment on bark. It's called kangaroo. Now here the whole piece itself is not necessarily symmetrical. Uh, the kangaroo is seen from the side, so the legs and the arms are all sticking off to one side where, while the tail is going off the other way and the head's only looking one way. So if you were just to take the entire shape, it would not be symmetrical. But if you look at the designs on or inside of the kangaroo, along sort of its backbone or its spine, there's sort of those dashes, you can see that halfway down when they started to add some patterns um, and sort of liven up their image of the kangaroo for this piece, they made their design symmetrical. So they do green and then yellow and then green and then yellow. Um, and you can also see a little further up sort of towards the kangaroo's neck there are some symmetrical shapes that they used to design with. So the last piece I'm going to be showing you is actually more of an artifact than a piece of art. And what that means is it's more of a tool, something that was used in everyday life. So this over here um, is the remnants of one of the paintbrushes. It's actually about 11 centimeters long and it's made also out of bark. So you, know, you can make art wherever you are. Uh, find some bark, find some rocks, find some charcoal, uh, burnt wood, and you can make something beautiful and creative with it. So we're going to get started. Uh, there's the supply list for our first project right over here. And we will be back in just a minute and we will be able to do some awesome silly string art that will be symmetrical. See you in a minute. Okay, we're going to start our string project. Take your paper, fold it right in half like I'm doing here, and then unfold it so that it's ready to go. Next thing you're going to do is grab your string 
And if you're using tempera or acrylic paint, you can paint it right in your little cup or bowl uh, like I'm doing here, or you could place it down on a piece of paper and paint it there as well, um, or paper towels or a napkin. Now I'm going to be taking that string and pulling it right through the bristles, the hair of the brush, to keep the extra paint off of it. Then I'm going to take that string and put it down in a squiggle on my paper. Bend and loop and swirl that string. Keep the clean end pointing out the bottom. Fold it over. Hold it down firmly but not too tight. And then pull that string right out. There you go. Now you put the string on the workspace and open it up to see what you've done. There. Now I'm going to continue on doing the blue on top of this the same way so you can see what it looks like with two colors. So you can reuse the same string or you can use new string, completely up to you. I'm just reusing this because I sort of like the colors together anyways. I am opening it up. You can see that each string pull is going to create a completely different and cool symmetrical artwork. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how it looks when you use food coloring. So what I've done is I've used a couple of taste, uh, tablespoons of water and about 10 drops of food coloring in each cup. Same process, I'm going to fold my paper, open it up, and then I'm going to take the string that we're going to use and I'm going to dip it right in the color that I want to use first. So I'm just going to go ahead put it right in that food coloring water. I'm going to use something to sort of push it down. There's not a lot of water in there, not a lot of dye, so I'm just using the back of a brush. This is something where you might want to use um, gloves if you want. I'm not because it does wash off, but you can certainly choose to use gloves. Then I'm going to take this string and do the same as I did with the paint, where I'm going to swirl it all over and leave the clean end sticking out the bottom. I'm going to close that. This time I'm going to show you what it looks like when you use a book or a pad. I'm just going to place it down right on top. You don't even have to really press it down. It just keeps the paper nice and flat. Pull out the string, put it down, remove your book, and then you get to open your piece and find out what it looks like. There we go. We can see that the food coloring is a little bit more like watercolor and very gentle. And you can do this as many times with as many colors as you want our finished string art. You can always add something later once they're completely dry with marker, pastel, or more paint. Completely up to you. I hope you really enjoyed that cool string art project that we just did. It was symmetrical, and then when they dry, like I said, you can always add to them, which is pretty cool. So our next project is going to be um, sort of mandalas or pattern painting. So we're going to be creating symmetrical art by working from the center to the outside, sort of in a pattern or in a grid. Now you'll be able to do this project either on paper or if you have access to cool rocks or you know, anything else that you really want to paint on and some paint, you can do that on that as well. So I'll be cutting away to me working on the project. First I'll do it on paper and then I'll do an example really quickly on a rock so you can see what that looks like. So you can grab your supplies. If you are planning on doing it on a rock, it really doesn't hurt to do one on paper first and get a little bit of practice in. Um, so feel free to grab the supplies for both. So I'll list the supplies over here for just a minute. You can pause, grab your supplies if you want to do the second project with me. and. Um, We'll be back with my, my moving hands in just a minute, and we'll get you guys going. So 
So here we go. We're going to start on the symmetrical pattern. I have an item, this happens to be just a candle, that I am tracing a circle with. I'm going to use my pencil to put my center dot. Then I'm going to make sure that I go from top to bottom with a dividing line, and then I'll go from side to side with a dividing line. These will help me make sure that my pattern is symmetrical. Now I'm going to add sort of those rings or circles around the dot, like ripples in the water. I'll just add a few of them. You don't need to draw them too dark because we're going to be erasing these guidelines later. Now I get to start the fun part where I'm going to start with my pattern. So I'm going to start at the center. Maybe I'll make my dot in the center there bigger. And then I will work outward from there. And I sort of have four parts or four pie slices of that circle. I want to make sure I repeat or do the same thing in each one of those as I go around. So I'm going to speed up here so that you can see me draw in my design and then color it in. with your paper pattern with symmetry, you can work on a rock or another item. So process is the same. You'll start with a center dot, your straight guidelines, and then you'll use your circular guidelines starting from the center. And make sure to repeat your patterns. The only thing that you'll see I do a little differently is instead of just using pencil to draw out my pattern, I'll actually be using marker so I can see a little bit easier while I'm using the paint. While you're painting, don't forget that you might need to let some of your colors dry before painting on top of them, otherwise your colors will mix. Alright, so let's get this started and I'll show you the finished pieces at the end. Thank you very much for playing along with me today in our Art Together online lesson from the Worcester Art Museum. Uh, I had a lot of fun putting this together. I hope you had just as much fun trying one or two of the projects and listening to the story with me. So if you want to, you can definitely share your art with us. We would love to see it. One of my highlights is seeing the projects that you guys have done at home. We have a couple of hashtags that you could choose from if you wanted to. The first one is hashtag WhamArtTogether, and the second one is hashtag WhamArtAtHome. So I'd like to thank all of you for participating, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>